Hi, and welcome back to the five minute tips from Accelerate. In this series, we've been going through some AWS services and features. In the first video, we created a DynamoDB table. In the second video, we created a Lambda function. And then the third video, we created a trigger on the DynamoDB table to call the Lambda function whenever a row has been inserted, removed, or modified. We just printed out the um, environment variables and some test data from our Lambda. Um, but we were able to connect the two. And in this video, we're going to call the Lambda function from an API. In our case, a RESTful API that we add as a trigger. So I still have my Lambda function open here. I'm going to scroll to the top. And over on the Add Triggers, I'm going to select API Gateway. Now it says Configuration is required. So we scroll down and we see that uh, it needs to know something about the API, that we're going to create a new API. We don't have an existing one. And for security, we'll use IAM like we've been doing. Uh, under additional settings, we can change the name and, and other stuff, but we're going to leave them all the same and just click that. And then once we save it, it will create the API, and then we can actually go look at it. So I'm going to command click on the hwpython-api, and we can see that we go right to that API in the API gateway. Now, under our API definition, we have resources. We only have one, it's called hwpython. That would be part of the URL for whatever domain is, is pointing here. And then under that, we would send in the functions like get, post, um, update, whatever. We have any specified here, so any type of request will go through this process of the method request, integration request, calling our Lambda, and then the reverse. So this is where you would define mapping any uh, parameters into the call to the to the lambda and back. We're going to use these defaults. It creates it for us knowing that we want to pass in the data and pass the response back basically directly, but we could massage that uh, in this process. Um, that's a little bit uh, farther than we're going to go in five minutes. So let's go ahead and do a quick test using a get method. And I'll run the test and scroll down to the bottom see the results. We got a 502, so something's not right about the response. So look, let's look in our Lambda, and we can see we're passing back message process rows. But we need to pass back status code and the HTTP response code of 200. So we'll save that, make sure it tests OK, and then in the API gateway, we can test it again, and we get a 200. So that looks good. We would, we're ready to, to publish that. And what we would do is we would um, uh, deploy the API. We could um, name the stage something like dev development for uh, the default development stage. And then once it's uh, released, we could actually call it using this URL. Now, we don't have our tokens because we're not logged in, so we don't have permission. But we would be able to call that externally for any user that's logged in with uh, the right tokens. Another great thing is this SDK generation. You can uh, generate the code as necessary. You can also export the um, definition as Swagger, something like YAML here. And then you could go to um, a Swagger editor like this, editor.swagger.io and paste it in here and then generate the client code or something like Swift and we haven't find any uh, operations but this would actually generate the code for you for your client that you could add into your project um, but we only have the any and everything comes back as the 200 if uh, it gets a 200 so it doesn't do very much but you can see that by hitting that API and getting access to the event in your Lambda function, the sky's the limit. I mean, you can connect the databases, call other services and features. Well, I hope you learned something here. I hope you've enjoyed these five minute tips on AWS from Accelerate. And if you have any educational needs at your company, please contact Accelerate here or in the comments below.